After age 65, you can withdraw funds for any purpose without penalty, but you'll still owe taxes if the withdrawal is not used for qualified medical expenses. So note this is a little bit different than like an IRA, right? You're putting the money in, and then usually with an IRA, when you take the money out, you have to pay taxes on it, which means you've got a deferral, but not a complete removal of taxes. Here, if you take the money out and you pay for qualified education or qualified uh, medical expenses, then you might not have to pay taxes on it at all. And then if you're out, if you're older than 65, you might still have money in there that you want to pull out. And in that case, you might be able to pull it out without paying for uh, medical expenses, in which case you'd have to pay taxes on it, which means you would have had a deferral similar to an IRA. But if you pay for the qualified medical expenses, you might not have to pay any tax on it at all. Okay. Ownership and portability. An HSA is owned by an individual, which means it's portable. The account stays with you if you change employers or leave the workforce. Now, this is one of the things that's been kind of a problem in the past as we've had changes, societal changes over time. It used to be that healthcare was often tied to a place of employment, people often working for the same place for their entire life. And those kind of benefits are can be great because there's things that you can give, the employer can give, but there are also things that lock people into a particular job. It's difficult to go from one job to another if your entire pension and your health plan and everything is tied to that one job, right? That's, that's a way that a job can kind of tie you into it as well. So there's pros and cons of it. So here they're saying the HSA is owned by the individual, which means it's portable, which means, you know, might leave you still free to, to move to another job if you need to eligible individual so to be eligible to have contributions made to your hsa you must uh, be covered under a high deductible health plan so here's one of the things that i th i believe basically you know changed a bit when they were trying to do all that stuff to the the health insurance they tried to make this hardcore line definition of what it means to be a high deductible plan so consequently you should be able to determine the plans usually will be quite clear that it is or it is not a high covered or classified as a high deductible uh, health plan. And obviously, if it is a high deductible health plan that you could think of it as bad or good because it means, well, there's a high deductible. That's usually bad. But then it qualifies for these benefits because they're trying to subsidize the bad plan because it's possible lower income individuals are going to have that plan. So you could, so you, any case, that's how it is. And have no other health insurance except certain uh, disregarded coverage. So if you are an eligible individual, anyone can contribute to uh, your health savings account. However, you cannot be eligible in Medicare or be another person's dependent. So it gets a little bit confusing. Our health system note that you're paying for insurance, but then when you reach eligibility for Medicare, then Medicare, it, is basically going to be you know one of the primary kind of insurance so you have that kind of interplay when someone's in their working years and whatnot they, they're going to have their own health insurance which might be a high deductible health plan and then there could be differences or whatnot when they become subject or able to apply for medicare so an individual does not fail to be treated as an eligible individual for any period merely because the individual receives hospital care or medical services under any law administrated by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs for a service-connected disability. So you will not fail to be considered an eligible individual because you receive benefits from a health saving plan under sur uh, surprise billing uh, laws you must be or must be or be considered an eligible individual on the first day of the month to take an hsa deduction for that month see last month rule so what's the last month rule uh, if you are an eligible individual on the first day of the last month of your tax year december 1st uh, for most taxpayers uh, you are considered to be an eligible individual for the entire year, so long as you remain an eligible individual during the testing period as discussed below. Okay, so what's the testing period? So you must remain an eligible individual during the testing period in order to take advantage of the last month rule. The testing period begins with the last month of your tax year and ends on the last day of the 12th month following that month. For example, December 1st, 2023 
uh, to December 31st, 2024. So if you fail to remain an eligible individual during this period, other than because of death or becoming disabled, you will not have to include in income the total contributions 